So hello, I'm Lisa Matthews. I head up Jack. As uh, has been said, this is the packaging arm of Frost Collective. And we have a number of businesses within that collective. Hello, friends. Um, hello, people who work in marketing. And hello, people who work in the design industry. This is a presentation which I guess encapsulates my thoughts around what mindful packaging is. And as Vin said, it's not just about sustainability, but um, we'll get into that shortly. So enjoy, relax. It should be a highly visual presentation. It's packaging after all. And um, yeah, here we go. So I'm going to cover off mindful packaging, some of the principles behind it. I'm going to talk about great design because I think those things are not mutually exclusive. And then a little bit at the end, getting the most out of your agency. So um, for the clients or marketeers in the room, um, there are some common sort of whinges and complaints about agencies. And from the agency in the room, there's some current uh, comments and complaints about clients. So how do we work together as, as partners in order to drive the, the entire packaging industry forwards? So I am 55% clients. I spent most of my life working in a big multinational across a number of different brands, across FMCG, retail, in both local and global offices. And um, then I moved to the dark side. So off to agency land because I thought, you know, packaging is really fantastic, but as a marketeer, we don't get a lot of time to think about it. And yet, it's probably one of the most important things we have. <coughs> So I wanted to spend a lot more time working on packaging. And I've uh, worked my way across the world, so um, from South Africa, my home country, to London, then to Singapore, and now in Australia. So welcome. So 55% client, 100% consumer, just like the rest of you in the room. And um, like you, I shop, I buy things, I try new things. And I also throw away around two and a half bags of rubbish each week. We all do. This is a photography project by a guy called Seagal in, uh, in the States. And basically, he tracked a bunch of different people and how much rubbish they threw away in a week. And it's absolutely mind-blowing. Absolutely mind-blowing. So two and a half bags of rubbish every week is equivalent to a three-bedroom house full of rubbish every year. That's what all of us are putting into the environment. I'm not sure where most of that packaging comes from. I don't really know much about plastics. I'm learning on a daily basis. I'm sure we all are. <coughs> I'm learning about the new technologies around packaging that are coming out also on a daily basis. Stuff made from mushrooms, stuff made from milk. I'm also not sure where it goes. Some of these figures you may already know, but some of them are pretty mind-blowing. Only 2% of the 78 million tons of plastic used each year is actually recycled. This is from the Ellen MacArthur Foundation. All the plastic ever made still exists. It's pretty <coughs> gross, really. Do we know what we make and where it goes? So as an ex-marketeer, I didn't give a thought to what happened after the consumer bought the products. Maybe I thought a little about how they used it in their home, but I never thought about them disposing it. I didn't think about where that all went. Most of it goes to landfill, but a whole lot of it doesn't. Five years to break down a milk carton. That's crazy. Styrofoam glass bottles never break down. You better hope they get to the right place. You might think you're doing a great thing by buying into biodegradable, but actually, did you know that there are virtually no compost facilities in Australia? So biodegradable at the moment is not really a good option. What tends to happen with biodegradable packaging is that people tend to litter more because they think it's OK to throw it to the ground, and also it contaminates the recycling chain. So if it doesn't get composted and goes in with regular rubbish, it, uh, it messes everything up. My rather phallic cucumber. <laughs> yeah, sure. We can't do without packaging, so we have to do it better. We all know that packaging is 
is a must. A cucumber without plastic wrap on it will last about three days in the fridge. One with plastic wrap will last 14 days. So there'd be a hell of a lot of food wastage if we didn't wrap things up. And it doesn't have to be food either. Obviously beverages, milk, uh, things we order online, all of that stuff will arrive broken and then the waste would be even worse. We've just got to remember that we're all responsible. I thought it'd be interesting just to kick off with this little video about how disposable things are and how we really need to think again. 4.5 billion years ago, a giant molecular cloud collapses in space, setting free a solar nebula out of which a planet is born, Earth. For 2 billion years, this planet evolves and first life appears. A soup of cells, bacteria, algae, fungi, a myriad of plants come to life. Fish rain the oceans and eat the algae. They absorb the sunlight and store it in their bodies. Dinosaurs, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals, they all live and die. And each year, their dead bodies are covered by layers and layers of sediment. Heat and pressure rise, turning them into yellow black liquid. Oil. Humans arrive, and with them, geologists. They study for years to find the oil and build rigs in remote places. Giant pumps extract the liquid, and it's shipped across the oceans. A refinery now cracks it open, and once again it travels. A factory then binds the compounds and turns them into plastic pellets. Stored in big containers around the world they go. Liquefy, they're molded into the shape of a beautiful spoon. The spoon drops and cools off to harden. Wrapped in plastic, it is put into a box, and the box is put on a pallet, and the pallet is put into a container, and the container is put on a truck, and the truck drives to a port, where the container is put on a ship, and ship, 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 the spoon arrives 6,000 kilometers around the world, where it is picked up by a merchant who puts it on a truck and drives it to a store, where it's placed on a shelf in a temperature-controlled room, where it sits for two months until you select it and pay for it with the money you've worked hard for, and you drive the spoon home, which is where you are standing right now with the spoon in your hand. Now tell me, do you still think it's too much effort to use a metal spoon that you just have to wash? And now that you're thoroughly depressed, let's see if we can lighten this up a little bit. So mindful packaging is the value you provide people and how you deliver on your promises. As brand caretakers, we have an awesome job. Uh, we are there to enhance people's lives and to do that in a way that excites them, surprises and delights them. Method is one of my favorite case studies of all time. So it's a massive brand in the US. Unfortunately, it's only available in Australia online, but uh, started around 15 years ago by two students who thought there's got to be a better way. And what I love about their whole philosophy is that they turn the category upside down. So method home cleaning products look beautiful. They are soft, gentle, organic. They're non-toxic. They look completely different from all of the Mr. Muscle, Sillet Bang, Bam Boom, uh, you know, in your face packaging out there and branding out there. And they just look amazing. So that to me is about mindful packaging. It's about thinking about your entire brand as a purposeful and value-led proposition. The consumer is your mother. People are at the heart of brands, whether we like it or not. The consumer is your brother, your idiot next door neighbor. The consumer is you. So why is packaging so not mindful? Why is there so much of it? I went on a bit of a recce to Coles a couple of week, weeks ago. And um, I thought it would be quite difficult to spot packaging that needed some, some thought some consideration, but actually I came away with bags full of it. So the Ferrero uh, Rocher famous little glittery golden chocolate balls, um, and I've written an article about this on LinkedIn. There's 15 chocolate balls there, and there's 37 pieces of packaging. That's insane. Nurofen tablets, pretty difficult to tell the two apart, same boxes, the only thing different is that in tiny writing it says 12 tablets and 24 tablets. We live in an aging society. How the hell are they supposed to read that? Why is packaging dangerous? <laughs> yeah, this is a true story. I mean, that's my kitchen table there. So a three pack of scissors that I needed a pack of scissors to open. It's just, 
It's just not mindful. Apparently, 6,000 people a year go to hospital for lacerations and, uh, th thanks to clamshell packaging in, in the US. Why is it dishonest? That was my lunchtime soup. There's a whole lot of packaging and not a whole lot of soup there. And why do all these packs look the same? They're all tomato sauces and they all feature tomatoes. That's not very exciting. <laughs> so, mindful packaging is the answer to all of these things. Mindful packaging is better packaging for a better world. So let's talk about what makes mindful packaging. And I'll park the sustainability angle until the end. We should start with it, and in fact I did. It should be running as a thread through everything that you, you do because the time is right. But let's think about some other aspects of mindful packaging. Mindful packaging is simple. Here's some work for Woolworths South Africa. Absolutely simple, intuitive, you just get it. A simple story. This is Unilever's margarine brand. They uh, had, I don't know, 40 different names in 100 different countries. Uh, now just about to sell the margarine category. But uh, yeah. Everything was cluttered. Everything was sort of following the category, loads of sunflowers and medals and sandwiches. But when you dig a little deep and you think about it, what is margarine good for? It's good to put on a sandwich. Who eats a sandwich? Mum makes sandwiches for her family. It's all about growing healthy kids. So we brought that to life on the side of the pack with that little family of sunflowers. That's simple. It's a big idea, but it's really simple. Mr. Lee. Mr. Lee is uh, an immigrant to Finland, and he launched his, uh, his noodle brand. Really simple. Hey, there's Mr. Lee. <laughs> Just because it's simple doesn't mean to say it doesn't have a personality. Packaging is fun. Have fun with it. Some words from Jonathan Ive from Apple. To be truly simple, you have to go really deep. You have to deeply understand the essence of a product in order to be able to get rid of the parts that are not essential. Stop and think about that for a minute. Less is more, but it's really hard to do. The essentials can tell the story, though. This is an exercise by a, an agency called Anthropo uh, in Europe a few years ago. And uh, they did a forward, uh, I guess, progression on a number of different brands. And they thought about how Guinness at the time could be simplified, just holding on to those, those assets. That are, that are Guinness. So when does the brand stop being the brand that it is? They peeled away all the layers until they could take away no more. The interesting thing is this is what Guinness looks like now. So Guinness has realized that just because they're made of more, which is what the brand essence is, so it's all about the drink that takes 119 seconds to pour, it separates the boys from the men, you can show made of more in different ways and keep it simple. Mindful packaging is authentic. Hellman's, 100-year-old brand, in fact, a little bit older. So Richard Hellman started a, a deli in New York in 1913. And uh, he and his wife made a number of different products. Hellman's mayonnaise was, was one of his best sellers. And he signaled the quality of that mayonnaise and the wonderful eggs and oil that they use by tying a big blue ribbon around it. The brand looked pretty tired. It looked very diluted in the US. It looked pretty brash everywhere else. And the brand manager was about to get rid of the ribbon. They didn't realize the story there. They hadn't dug deeper to understand. You probably might not have seen this, uh, the new pack. So the new pack is, is the big one on the right. Basically, Helmers has gone back to that simple idea, born in a deli, and brought that to life on the pack. Mindful packaging is also authentic. And authentic means telling a true story. It means telling a story that's your own. This is a great example. Plymouth Gin, uh, a brand again established in 1793, so a couple of hundred years of heritage there. And it used to be the Navy Ration Gin. And for some reason, some intelligent marketeer decided to make it look like something from the 1930s. Now, if you stop and think about the gin category, and some of you might know more about that than others, there's tons of Art Deco gin brands out there. I can reel off Tanqueray 10, there's Bombay Sapphire, there's, there's a whole bunch of others. Why would you make a brand or a product 
that was Navy ration in 1793 and actually went in the back pocket of sailors to America with the founding fathers. Why would you make that? Um, sorry, that was a, f a few hundred years earlier, but uh, the point is it traveled far and wide in the back of the Navy's pockets. Why would you make that look Art Deco? So again, getting back to an authentic story there, and you can see the uh, product as it looks now, which uh, looks like it you know, was made 200 years ago. Everything about it is authentic. And in fact, the brand team put up the price from 15 pounds to 25 pounds, and sales doubled. So by telling a story that's true to you, you can add so much value. But what if you don't have 100 years of heritage or 200 or 300? Well, there are other stories you can tell. There's always a story about why you started the business, why the brand was born, what you believe in, what you do best. Prost is a beer that was invented uh, about six months ago for the Indonesian market. And um, as a newcomer, it had to look and feel different. Indonesian guys are switching away from beer. They needed something light. So the beer has all the cues of lightness. Silver, the wings, the green glass. But the story here is about the fact that the beer is so light and so enjoyable because it's made from three types of hops. And those three types of hops are also triple filtered through ice. You can see the three hops in the wings there that, you know, Red Bull gives you wings, well, so does Prost, apparently. Chongqing, a beer from China. This is a great story. It's probably the only beer in the world that has a hot pot on it. And those of you who are familiar with Chinese cuisine will, will understand the hot pot. Literally a pot of boiling soup that you throw vegetables and miscellaneous things into. And it gets tastier and tastier as the evening goes on. And in Chongqing, people get sweatier and sweatier. And the men sit around it with all their friends and strip their shirts off and drink loads of beer. So this is the beer of the men of Chongqing. And this is the hot pot. I just want to say something about language as well, because language obviously can lend itself to authenticity. And here's a couple of examples that really kind of do my head in. I mean, this is a bit like um, brands trying to get fresh with you. These are from a site called Wackaging, which, uh, yeah, I guess it all started with innocent smoothies. And if you, if you look through the, the supermarkets in, in the UK, almost every brand is having a go at this, and I see it in Australia as well. My dad made a promise to me and my brother that he would only use stuff in our products that is natural, pure, and helps make us healthy. I told him everything also has to taste great, and he agreed. Ella. Nix, nada, no, the stuff you don't need. Oh, cringeworthy. And then Nudie's apology to people who make additives. Of course, they had to uh, generate an apology recently because they didn't pay their tax bill. <laughs> Mindful packaging is also distinctive. It stands out. It's got one foot in the category, just like this pack for PepsiCo, but it also stands out in its own unique way. It's bright. It looks like it's made for sharing. But it's telling the story of tiger nuts, which are nuts with a speckly, crackly shell in a really distinctive way. So once you see tiger nuts, the word in the face, you never stop seeing it. We could have just put a, a bunch of nuts and written tiger nuts in dull font. Kapiti, New Zealand brand. This brand looked terrible. It did what every other premium ice cream in the supermarket did. It had scoops of ice cream and frilly font on it. But actually, Kapiti is all about the art of making fantastic ice cream. So putting beautiful wallpaper, all handmade, could tell a story that made this brand stand out. Or what about this lemonade font for KFC? KFC, like all the other uh, fast food brands, is really trying to dial up that sense of handmade, of natural sourcing, et cetera, et cetera. But what a great way to, to show lemonade in a font that looks like it's been knocked up by a farmer in his backyard. So does distinctive mean meaningful? Not necessarily, and I think that's something we need to think about. There's a plethora of packaging out there which looks very hipster. So stripes, uh, words, 
all very pared back. The problem is, is it distinctive? You might notice it once, but will you buy into it again? This was a really interesting case study where Unilever underhandedly sent out this, this brand Evos, Evos, uh, to a bunch of, of uh, cosmetics bloggers, and they all raved about it. Oh, this is amazing. They told them it cost $20 a bottle. And then they found out it was actually Suave, a $5 bottle of shampoo that had been dressed up to look cool. Now, you can imagine in six months' time when the next copycat comes out, it will also be pretty dead in the market. So there's something about looking like yourself. And look, Suave doesn't look that fantastic, I agree, but uh, at least it's got some character to it. Mindful packaging is also engaging. So I love this range. It's a buddy. If I've got a blinding headache, or I cut my finger, I, f I feel like I can grab this and, and feel better really quickly. It understands me in the context in which I am. How to surprise and delight me. This is some work for Manfredi. It's a Manfredi pizza poster. It's an open and sharing pizza concept uh, near Piermont. And this is all about sharing pizza with your mates. It's quite casual. And they also have a bit of a philosophy about doing good for the world. So they've done away with disposable plates and knives and forks. And the box has been cleverly serrated, so you can pull it apart, and it becomes plates for you to share your pizza on. And the bottom part of the box has a very clever origami-like fold in it. So when you take your pizza home because you haven't quite finished it, you don't need to use tinfoil or plastic wrap. You just fold it, and it creates a little house for the pizza. Clever ways of being engaging. This is some work for Guzmani Gomez when uh, the brand first started. So they're having a bit of, bit of problem with um, people going into stores and not knowing what to order. It just didn't feel like an engaging experience. There was information all over the place. I didn't know where to look. It was taking ages. People were queuing up and getting frustrated and mostly walking out. Just thinking very carefully about how people read and experience a brand, whether it's a pack in the hand or whether it's your packaging represented through signage or through a menu board, makes that experience so much easier. It makes it easy to navigate, simple to use. So off the back of this project, Guzman's uh, sales went up 400%. Queuing time was reduced by 50%. Another great example of engaging. Tanqueray number 10 is the citrusy brother of, of the regular Tanqueray. And what better than to bring that out through the structure of the bottle? Fantastic story. You can see it looks like a, an orange squeezer. And the cap is like a zester. So bringing that story to life in a really engaging way and then providing the barman with some fantastic collateral. So I particularly love the uplighter, which lights up the bottle when it's on the bar counter, and also the little spritzer, which uh, the barman can use, or the mixologist, rather, to finish off the drink with a spritz of citrus uh, aroma. So thinking about engaging, think about how you flex your brand assets. So distinctive memory structures are, are not a new concept, and Byron Sharp is, is an Aussie. So most of you marketers will, will know of him. Um, but seriously, thinking about your brand assets and thinking about how they should be consistent and yet creative is also something interesting. Uh, this is a limited edition range of Heinz beans, and each of them has been signed by Morris Drake, who was the guy who came up with the Heinz beans means Heinz uh, slogan 50 years ago. Absolutely fantastic use of, of the key brand assets and colors. 50 different uh, lines of what beans mean. Beans mean dads, because dads can't cook. Beans mean it's eggs, because eggs go with beans, of course. So engaging at the most basic level with your brand, thinking about your brand assets, what are they? For the entrepreneurs in the, the house tonight, think about what you're going to be famous for, how people are going to recognize you. I could do a pop quiz. Maybe I'll do one. Do we know what brand this is? Clinique, yeah. Brilliant. So thinking about the colors, the shapes, 
that you use. This is actually a little book that I, I wrote. That's why it's in book format. But thinking about how the, those equities then flex across everything you do and how you appeal to people's senses. So thinking about what people see, what they smell, what they hear. Um, you know, whether it's the pop of a Grolsch cap or whether it's the yellow of a Boddington's can, whether it's the ritual of the lemon that you put into your corona. And first and foremost, which is a bit weird, um, because it's the last principle, but it should be the first, as I mentioned earlier, mindful packaging is better for people and planet. So this is a, this is a key philosophy for us. Now, better for people and planet is... Uh, it's, not, it's not, not just about big things. So Puma's Clever Little Bag was, was a big project, and I've got a little video to show you. But it can be about the small incremental improvements that you make as well, and we can go through a couple of those. Graham, wave your hands, Graham, actually worked on this project. So, it's great to be here. <laughs> so Graham is the head of Frost Design, and please feel free to pick his brains on this awesome project. The second thing is the amount of time it takes to do something like this. So design can't be left to the last minute. And I can't tell you how many briefs we get from, uh, from those lovely marketeers out there who go, I need it next week. I've been thinking about it for three years, but I need it next week. And but also the number of ideas. There were more than 2,000 ideas. Isn't it amazing? 2,000 ideas on how to make a box into a bag. So I mentioned that it doesn't have to be big, scary things like the Puma box, which obviously uh, impacts on factories and, and accountants in a big way. But in fact, for that investment, they can save a lot of money. But it can be small things as well. So remarkable pencils or remarkable stationery is a, is a, a brand of stationery made from recycled things, and it won a UK Innovation of the Year Award. And the pencil pack is great. The pencils are made from recycled vending cups, those plastic cups that you get in every sort of conference room in hotels and things. And um, the box is just a really fantastic, clever little structure. No glue needed because the pencil itself, which is heroed, actually holds the box together. Really simple. So I mentioned planet a lot, but also people. So thinking about the experience, thinking about how people eat things, how they drink things, how they consume things, where they are, who they're with. Human-centered design is something that's very precious to us, and uh, it's where every project should start, thinking about who's actually using this. So here's a project for KFC, where they wanted to extend into the breakfast slot, because obviously a lot of people go to KFC at lunch and certainly for dinner, but they needed to extend the dough part. So this is a breakfast um, uh, similar to a sausage McMuffin, I suppose, chicken McMuffin. Mm. Um, and thinking about who's going to be eating these things. Truck drivers, guys on the run, guys loading, guys merchandising, you know, delivery men. How do they eat? They eat in their car. They can't be doing with a flimsy plate. Actually, what they need is a box that opens up and allows them to eat neatly on the go. Everyone can do mindful packaging. This is a student project. 
students can do it, yay students, and then so can we. So thinking about glad uh, bin bags, 30 kilograms of waste per pallet if you strip away the box. The box is, is thrown away, right? That's one and a half tons of cardboard with every truck. What if you actually take the bags out of the box, forget the branding for now, and you actually print all the information on the last bag? You pull out the bags as you go, one at a time, but the last bag, which has been printed, has got the label on it. It's brilliant. It reminds you what you need to buy next. Really simple. So if a student can do it, you can do it too. Another Apple quote, and I didn't mean to have Apple quotations, but there you go. This is from Steve Jobs. You've got to start with the customer experience and work backward towards the technology, not the other way around. So don't start with what you do, but start with what they do. What if you could redesign everything? Where could you go? These are questions we should be asking ourselves every day. This is a fantastic project by IDEO, looking at the circular economy. So how can things have value all the way through their life cycle? What if packaging was designed for online shopping? Think about it. Packs are mostly designed for on-shelf. They're shouting as loudly as possible. But a lot of people switching to online shopping now. No need for branding anymore, right? Mm -hmm. So strip away all of that stuff and have a plain pack, which is easily recycled, costs less to make. What if packaging was designed to become more valuable? So what about a makeup range that's... Uh, sold in, in brass cases, like they were in the old days. So back in my grandma's days, brass case on the lipstick or on the makeup uh, compact, and actually it ages and becomes more valuable over time, just like we do. But also, what if there were sensors built in that knew what was happening with your skin and, and your health? And what if that sensor could also uh, order refills for you? It's brilliant. What if packaging was designed to stop waste? Lots of expiry dates that, you know, you pick up the yogurt in the fridge, it's like, oh God, it expired yesterday, bin it. Uh, what about medicine? Difficult to read those labels, really difficult. Just not user friendly at all. But what if they went brown and spotty just like bananas do? Wouldn't that be cool? You could see that something wasn't, wasn't right anymore. Right, so that's a spin through mindful packaging. I just wanted to end off now with uh, ways of working. So ways of working is not about our uh, methods or philosophy of, of um, producing mindful packaging or our tips or tools or techniques. It's really thinking about how we can get the best out of each other as an agency and as a client. And um, as I mentioned earlier, alluded to earlier, there's always gripes from either side. And I know that because I've been on, on both sides of the fence. In fact, I was on the third side of the fence, too, because I used to be a copywriter. But let's have a little think about how we can make things better. Change everything, but don't change everything. I've heard that one before. So mindful ways of working, not just ways of working. Be partners. We're all on the same team, working towards the same goal. We're not just suppliers. Design is really important. It's everything about your brand. Call us anytime for a chat. Just shoot the breeze. Invite us into stack shelves or hand out flyers or sit in your team meetings. Connect us with your other agencies so that we're not you know, sitting in a silo. Everything should be connected and holistic. Open up. Work together from the very start to the very end. The sooner you involve us, the sooner we can contribute, help you plan realistically so that you have time to make great design, because great design doesn't just happen overnight. We can add to the brief so that it's sharper and clearer, and at the same time we can get thinking, because we all like to think, and we think in the shower a lot. That's why I do my best naming. Create inspiring briefs. Briefs are so important, because great briefs equal great design. Make the brief tight, clear, concise, to the point. There's nothing like focus. You've all heard the saying, the freedom of a tight brief. Realistic, 
be realistic about timings and costs. As I just said, it takes time to do great design. Don't just think about six months time. Think about your vision, especially when it comes to sustainability and mindful packaging. Think about five years. Where should your brand be? Think about 100 years. What would you like to be famous for? What change would you have made to the world? A brief is also more than just a piece of paper. It should be an ex inspiring experience. Let's go somewhere fantastic. Let's experience the brand in all of its richness. Let's debate. Let's challenge. Let's talk to each other. But also give great feedback. Feedback is important. Effective feedback makes us all happy. Fluffy feedback makes us want to die. You should set judgment criteria right from the beginning and go back to those judgment criteria when you're judging that design. So, does it have a big idea? What was the big idea you identified at the beginning? Does it have a clear and compelling personality? It's personalities that can make the difference between a commodity brand and a brand that uh, is iconic. Part of the judgment criteria surely should be mindful packaging. So we've spoken about simple, engaging, authentic. Uh, what was the other one? Oh my god, I've forgotten. Um, better for people and planet. And distinctive. Be objective. This is about the brand. This is about the consumer. It should be considered from a consumer point of view. Design is not about liking, and design is not about a democratic decision. It's not about fudging or diluting. It's about taking risks. Remember, too, commodities are a consequence, not a coincidence. We design our own outcomes. This is a true snapshot. If you cover up this brand, it could be the others. Those brands are interchangeable. And bad packaging is a consequence, not a coincidence. So this is a uh, David Jones, oops, David Jones uh, box that arrived this week. And it was a bit of a disappointing experience. So not very well branded, didn't get us excited. Not only that, but about 80% of the the box was unoccupied. So it just felt really wasteful. Missed opportunity there. Design is your biggest asset. It really is. Everything starts with design. I'll give you a little demonstration of that. Your brand DNA. T. T is all about uplift. It's about refreshment. It's about making you feel good. The Lipton brand essence is about illumination and that illuminating effect of tea is built in and baked into the uh, iconography of the brand. So the identity. That then flows out to the core, uh, let's say the iconic um, master brand. So everything about this pack says illumination. It says feel good. It says lived in. That then flexes to tell new stories. So the sun illuminates in different ways. That then flexes again and grows and builds on itself and bakes itself into the structure and the shapes. And as I mentioned earlier, your sounds, your textures, your materials, all of it should be considered. This is actually a worthy uh, project to mention because, again, Lipton had God knows how many different bottle moulds across the world. And uh, not only did they all look different, but they weren't very smart. So this was about getting to one simple branded look and feel that looks fantastic. It's got the branding baked in, and that's got a, a second function, which is to strengthen the bottle by using less materials. So 20% less materials used, and lots of savings, better for people and planet. And then through into your brand world, through into your comms, how does that story of illumination keep going, keep growing consistently and creatively? Be mindful, everybody, because mindful packaging is better packaging for a better world. Thank you.